This is, uh, this is a rhetorical question, and, and I'm not asking for, a, for an outward response, but just ask yourself this question. Do you believe, do you believe that God is capable of doing anything? Do you realize, see, you couldn't even hold that in. <laughs> even though I said I'm not looking for an outward response. You, yes, yes, that, that's good. That, that's good. That tells me that you really believe it to the point that you can't, you can't contain that. I, I believe that. I know this to be true. And, and that being the case, I'm going to move in a little different manner here. Um, I've, I've never done exactly what I feel prompted to do right now. But uh, God kind of gave me a, a vision before I, I came up here, which I don't get a lot of visions, at least not from God. I get a lot of visions, but most of them are not from him. But he I feel like he kind of gave me a, a vision, and I saw uh, a man, and uh, there's, a, there's a window. There's a window near, behind, in front, beside, there's a window. And there's somebody watching online right now. There's a man watching or listening somewhere. You might even be listening. You might not be able to watch where you are, but you might be listening on the, on the website or something. And there's a, there's a male right now who's uh, right on the verge of making some really bad decisions. And God spoke to me for you. Because I think this is a, I think it's a matter of life and death where you are right now, the things you're contemplating. And I just want to tell you, we all go through things. We all have horrible days and weeks and months, even years. And we all are tempted to just step outside of everything that we considered right and normal. But I just want you to know God still loves you. He still has a purpose for you. You are not useless. You're not a waste. Uh, you're not a problem for everyone else. One of the things the enemy tells us when we're down is that everyone would be better off without us. And it's, it's, it's very, 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 very rarely the case. So I just want to speak life to whoever that is. Don't, don't make the worst decisions. Know that, uh, that, that you're still valuable. And I want to pray for you. And all of us in this room are going to agree in prayer for you right now. Heavenly Father, you're the creator of life. The enemy of our soul really likes to try to steal that very thing from us. Life and joy and fulfillment, understanding. And God, whoever it is that I'm speaking to, I pray that you would just, like a bolt of lightning, pierce their heart, pierce their soul. Let them understand that what they're buying into is a lie. It's a lie, and it's a lie bent on destruction, and not just their own, but people around them. The ripple effect that follows. God, I pray that the, uh, the contemplation that's going on right now would be interrupted by your spirit. Interrupt the enemy's voice, interrupt the enemy's plan, and God, I pray that there would be life where there is death creeping in. So we ask you to salvage this spirit, this soul, this man that I'm talking to today. Salvage him and allow him to hear your voice over all the other voices that he's hearing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. I know for some of you that might seem like a really weird thing, but if it was you that I was talking to, it would be your God moment. So I, I know for somebody listening today, it's a God moment um, and, and maybe a moment of, of just salvation, plain and simple. So thank you for indulging that. This is kind of a Thanksgiving message. It's not a long message. Uh, I've, I've got too much uh, dressing in me to preach for very long. Um, so it's not a real long message. Um, you know, it's, you, we only get, I don't know what your life's like. I only get dressing like twice a year. And so when I get it, it's like, man, give me some gravy. Give me some hot sauce. 
I want to make this a meal of its own. Anybody agree with me on that? Do I have any family on that one? <laughs> I'm serious. If nobody was watching, I could eat a whole plate of just dressing. Just let me doctor it up, and we can go with that. It's, it's, it's a shame. It's almost a crime. And I didn't do that just because people were watching. It was kind of a Thanksgiving message, and uh, I, really, I really want to talk to you about the goodness of God. Uh, the goodness of God. So, you know, you know me, I'm pretty, I'm pretty transparent with you, and you know I'm like 85% saved and righteous, but I'm working on the rest. I'm getting there <laughs> incrementally, and many of you are traveling with me, so we're all kind of, we're doing, we're doing all right, making some progress. But um, one, of, one of my issues in life is I tend to go into situations looking for the bad or what's wrong or going wrong. Like I'll come into sometimes a, a service and, and you know, rather than notice all the good things, you notice the one thing that's bad. Oh, there's a light out. One of these lights is out. And rather than notice all of them that are on, the whole time I'm just thinking that one light is out. Why didn't somebody see that? The light is out. Why is the light out? You go into a restaurant, you go into to a, a situation, and rather than see the good, you end up seeing the bad. And, and it's, it's easy to do, and it's easy to fall into that, because here's the truth, everywhere you go, everything you do, you can find bad in it if that's what you're looking for. You know, every room has a little dust and dirt somewhere. Every meal you order, there's something that's not exactly perfect. There's too much ice in the drink. There's not enough ice in the drink. Your soda doesn't have enough fizz, or it has too much. There's not a good mix there. I got tea. I ordered this peach tea, but I can't taste the peach. And I mean, there's always something. There's something in everything. And everybody, everybody that you were around during this Thanksgiving time, if you were you know, honored to be around family or friends, associates, whoever you were around, everybody you're around, you can find something bad about them. Well, that person is always, always picking their fingernails. They're always fidgeting. They're always doing this. Why do they always do that? When they look at me, they never make eye contact. They're always looking away. There's always, there's always bad to find. We can find bad in, in, in everything. And, and I think we, we tend to do that. We tend to do that. Even when we look at God. God is good all the time. Well, is he really good all the time? Because sometimes I pray and it doesn't seem like he's good. Sometimes his people don't make him look good. Sometimes this or that happens and that whole, you know, goodness of God thing, I, I don't know. Well, you know, in the Old Testament he did this. And, you know, in the Old Testament they did this. And uh, even in, in, in New Testament times, after in, the, in the dispensation, the time period, the span of grace, um, th this happened, that happened, all of this happened. If we can find bad in anything. And I'm trying in my life, I am trying in my life to be in that place where I live in the goodness of God. And it's a tough place to remain in. Because you have to deal with all these things. It's kind of like you're in a circle. You're in a circle and you're like, okay, I'm going to stay in this goodness of God's circle. But there are all these things trying to invade your circle. And you're just like, nope, nope, I'm, no, I'm going to believe in the goodness of God. I'm going to believe that God loves me. I'm going to believe in God's grace. I'm going to believe in his strength. I'm going to believe in his mercy no matter what happens. And then something happens that you didn't expect and you kind of think, okay, do I need, am I, am, I, am, I, am I getting out of the circle? Am I falling out of the circle? I'm really in my life, and I think, I think we are as a, as, a, as a congregation. I think we are more aptly understanding the goodness of God. Because God remains who he is even when it doesn't go like we want it to. God is still the same his presence is still the same. His attributes, his qualities are still the same. His blessing remains the same. His truth remains the same, no matter how much we fluctuate. So I just want to give you a little bit along those lines today, and I'm going to uh, kind of give a synopsis of three different psalms 
uh, in reverse order. Psalm 146, Psalm 145, and Psalm 144. And no, you're not going to be here a long time. I'm going to lightly touch on all three of these. Psalm 146 was probably not written by David, but other, other uh, worshipers and, and songwriters. It still opens this way. Psalm 146 has says, Hallelujah, praise to God. I will spend my life praising you. Now, this in itself, if you're a logical thinker, this in and of itself, I will spend my life praising you, becomes a bit overwhelming. Even a line like that. How many of you, now just, when I, if I say a line like, I want to spend all my days praising God, I want to spend all my time praising the Lord, how many of you automatically go to that place where that, that voice in your head that's the loudest is saying, well, you can't praise Him all the time. That doesn't even make sense. Anybody else like that? That's me. That's me. That's the way I'm thinking. I can't, because, I mean, wherever you work, whatever you do, if you go to work, you go to school, wherever, you're, wherever your, your job is, your associates are, you can't just stand around all day praising God. Amen, amen. Could, hey, uh, George, could you give me, could you help us? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just worship you, God. They literally would be like, okay. Okay, uh, can, you want to go get, you want to go get, um, yeah, go, go get somebody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise God. So my mind automatically says, you, what do we do? Well, it's, it's a posture of the heart, as we know, because that's the next thought. Those are, those are the dots that we have to connect. Now, we can't be like this all day and ignoring everything that's going on around us but we can be like this all day, praising God with who we are and what we are and how we function and what we meditate on. Because there are things that will occupy our thoughts. You know, there is a first place in our heart, our go-to. What matters the most to you in your life? And we have to get to that place that before anything else, the first thing in our heart is honoring God. And you think, well, and then so you who think that way are saying, I don't think I'll ever get there. <laughs> I don't think I can ever get to that place. We can get there. We can get there because what, it's, it's not like a stop. You have to stop off with every thought. Okay, well, before I can do that, I have to think here. I'm going to honor God. Okay, no. No, it's, it's more like a filter that everything flows through a strainer that everything flows through. So it's just like honoring God is that, that strainer, that filter, that's your first priority. And that's what's, that's what's happening in a lot of the Psalms. And we know from the, the book of Psalms, we've spent some time there in the last year, that David is manic depressive. David is a lot like us. One day everything is the best, the next day everything is the worst. David is very cerebral and very manic depressive, but he's also called a man after God's own heart. So that gives the rest of us hope. So a lot of the Psalms are that. David trying to figure out, how do I balance that? And, and with his own writing instrument, he's recording his own emotions and thoughts and, and, and his his path to try to figure out God and his life and as his, his everything. Psalm 146, the question is asked, who can we trust? Very blatantly, who can we trust? And, and uh, I haven't recommended this version too often because I don't think it's the best too often. But I would say for these three chapters, if, uh, if you, if you want to look up the Passion Translation of the Bible, it's their... They're very close to, it's very close to other translations, but it's it just, it really says uh, what, what the, the core of this is trying to say in a very practical way. It says, who can we trust in? Don't look to people. No matter who they are, don't look to people. They can't save you. Even the greatest leaders fail and fall. 
Do we have any students of history in the room? You like history, world history, um, probably world history even more than American history. We're talking world history. Students of history, you know this to be true. Almost all of your great leaders down through history led well, were gifted in leadership, and then got to a point where they interjected their own will over the will of, the, of whatever they were leading, a country, a nation, a people. So they got to a point, you can name almost any great leader, and they got to a crucible where they decided, I'm going to decide this because this is what I want to do. And it may not be the best for the whole. So we see that down through history. We still want to believe that man is going to save us. We still, to this day, even though we know everybody is fallible, everybody fails, everybody falls short, we will still say, you know, that person's going to make all the difference. They're not. They're not. It's not going to happen. Politicians are not going to lead this country back to God. The only way the United States is going to turn to God is if the people who belong to God rise up and represent God. If we put, a, put our stock in a, poli, in a politician and say, well, this person or this group of people or this is going to lead us back to God, this concept, it's not going to happen. If my people who were called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then I'll heal the land. That's the only way it's going to happen. If the church is not the church, nothing else can take the church's place. That's in Psalms. That's not even 2022. That's in the book of Psalms. You can't trust leaders. We want to, but we can't. The only thing we can trust is the Lord. The only consistency there is, is in the Lord. Let's take a step back to chapter 145. That was 146. 145 uh, starts and ends with praise. Starts and ends with praise. And I do think there's something. I'll just throw this in as, as a, just a, an extra piece. Um, there is something about starting our day acknowledging God in our life. Now, I'm not saying, you know, last week I talked to you about, you know, what we do, what we don't do, our patterns. And I'm not a guy who believes everybody has to pray for an hour in the morning and read five chapters of the Bible and this posture and this thing and, you know, and journal everything. That's the big thing. That we have to journal everything. If I journal everything, uh, I'm going to jail or hell, one of the two. Maybe both. So I'm not writing everything. If I write everything down that wants to get out, I would have no friends. I would have nothing. So I'm not journaling my stuff. I'll keep the journal and take it with me when I leave. But there is something to starting our day with acknowledging God in our life. And again, whatever that is for you. You know, some people say, this is the day the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. You know what? That little quip has never, it's a verse, but it's never really clicked with me. Because I feel like I'm just saying something that really, I, half the days I don't even believe at that moment. It's early. But I can acknowledge every day, God, I need you in my day. I need you in my life. I need you to lead me today. It doesn't have to be a big elaborate thing, but there is something, there is something that gains us power and focus when we dedicate ourselves to God consistently. So 145 starts and ends with praise. Starts and ends with praise. And I can say this, I think it's part of growing, getting older. Um, I thank God for things more than I ever have in my life. And, and I'm glad. And I look back at my younger self and I think I wish I would have done this and known this at a younger age. And I probably wouldn't have listened to me. But I thank God a lot now. I thank God a lot. And, and I'm sincere about it. And, and I think... You know, we should. We need to, to, to introspectively thank God a lot. Chapter 145 says this, and this is David. 
He says, God, you are great and deserve every good thing we can say about you. My discovery of your greatness never comes to an end. And, and I read this and I thought, that is, that is my sentiment. My discoveries of God's greatness never comes to an end. When I think I've experienced all of his goodness, there's more. There's more. Like today, God interrupted our time, our space, your space, everybody's space to maybe save one man's destiny. That's, see, that, that's God. We can never get to the end of God's greatness where we say, okay, I've seen it all now. I've seen it all. You know, people say, oh, I've seen everything. I've heard everything. I know every trick in the book. First of all, I want the book. I want to read that book. If there's a book with every trick in it, I want that book. I do. So if you can find that for me. But we think, okay, I've seen it all. I've done it all. No, there's more of God. There's more of God's goodness. Because as we move forward, we realize, wow, I didn't think God would even do this. I didn't think God would even show up here. And God is with me. I'm in a situation that I didn't even know God would, would still care about me. But he does. He still cares. And he still loves me. And he's still the same. You know, I realized again, because we had a lot of family together for Thanksgiving. We were fortunate for that. I understand. Blessed to have that. Not everyone has that. So I only say it's for the point. But I realized again that even when you're with people you love, somebody can offend somebody else to the point of just not wanting to be around them anymore. And I'm sure nobody in your family is like that, but occasionally we have that in our family. I'm sure everybody's just sweet as pie in your group, your people. But sometimes in our people, you know, and I can be that guy. I can, we can all be that person. It's like, okay, everybody, we're playing a game. We're playing a game. I don't want to play a game. Everybody's playing. Okay, I'll watch and cheer everybody on. And, and I'm capable of that. I'm capable of being that guy. Because my, my, my quiet side, my, my, pat, my, my side that's uh, introvert, my introverted side, doesn't want to do anything that might embarrass this person. So it's like, no, I don't want to play that game. There might be an embarrassing moment. So I'm out. I'm out of the circle. Well, we can, we, can, uh, we can irritate people. You could probably say one thing in your household or around your people and ruin some relationships. Bring up the taboo subjects. Every family has one person that just loves to go there. Bring up all the subjects that remove all the scabs from everything. And you just think, you know what? You need to be physically hurt. <laughs> We're all family. <laughs> Let's do this. And I say all that just to say, we can, we, can, we can burn our bridges with people very easily. You know, somebody says one thing to you out of line, you're going to remember it for the next decade. Oh, yeah, but they, you, know, you know what they said. What would they say? I don't remember, but you know because I told you. But it really made me mad, and it was really out of line. And so we don't ever care to love that person again. Yeah, I love them, but I don't like them. Yeah, I tolerate them, but I really don't want to be around them. And so we kind of cast that off on God. So it's shocking to me when I am that guy to God, and he still loves me the same. Isn't that amazing that we can be that person to God? No, God, I don't want to play that game right now. What you're asking me to do might not be comfortable for me. It might not fit in my comfort zone. It might be a little embarrassing. It might put me out there a little bit. It might make me take a risk I don't want to take. So I'm not going to do that. And instead of saying, okay, fine, do your thing. I don't, I don't care what you do. God just says, you know what? I'm going to stay right here, and I'm going to love you the same anyway. Because I created you, and I called you, and I know who you are. Fortunately, God judges our heart and not every little action. We benefit greatly from that. 
But David's saying, my discoveries of your greatness never ends. And if if you're going to write one thing down today, I'd say write that down. God, my discoveries of your greatness never ends. He says, your magnificence, your majesty, your miracles are awe-inspiring and drive me to wanting to think more about you, to meditation on you at all times. And again, that's not saying we always have to be thinking about God and, okay, God, God, then and God and, and God. No, no, it's just, it stays there. It's that filter that everything goes through. And we act out of that. David says, God, you are kind, you are patient. And I, and I love the fact, I love the fact that God is attributed with the same things that he asks us and leads us to do through scripture, through parables, through people, the same things he leads us to do as a follower of Christ. God is attributed with those same qualities. Kind, you're patient, you're loving, you're fair, you're faithful, you're righteous. You somehow blend everything together. That's, that's kind of what God does for us in a nutshell. Somehow he blends everything together for the good. The good, the bad, the ugly, the unknown. Somehow he takes all of that and he blends it together and he makes it good. He makes it good. So our trust can be in him. I might say from reading Psalm 145 that our trust has to be in him, but I'd rather say our trust can be in him. You can trust God with your stuff. You know, I see those commercials and they say, hey, we want to, be, we, we want to treat you like family. We're going to do a service for your home. And you can just give us the keys. Have you seen those commercials? You can just, and you're just thinking, no. No. Because I've seen too many movies where they pull this little apparatus out of, their, out of some case and make a key right there on the spot. Mission Impossible. They're making the key right there. They've got the imprint. We're good. They steal one of my garage door openers. You know, there are all kinds of things. You can get in a church. I used to to fancy myself being able to break in like any room or any building or whatever when I was young and and less godly. And, And most places, if you figure it out, you can get in. Some of you know that. You, in most places, you can get in. Well, like alarm systems, you can get in. Give me some aluminum foil and a, and a butter knife. You can get in just about anywhere. It just happens that way. So all these people say, I'm going to give us your keys. We're family. No, it's not going to happen. Why? Because we don't have that trust. Our trust has to be, but can be. See, there, there's that difference. Has to, can be. Um, your trust has to be in the Lord, but even, even more profound than that, your trust can be in the Lord. Your trust can be in the Lord. How many of you were here last Sunday? Okay, do you remember my Costco um, fiasco? I remembered it driving home. I remembered it driving home. Last week I had a, a moment. It wasn't a senior moment. It was some kind of moment. And I, I've, mid-sentence it was gone. My thought was gone. I tried to retrace my thoughts. I couldn't find them, couldn't see it. I was talking about confusion. And I was said, yeah, I was at Costco. And then all of a sudden, every thought was gone. <laughs> I was at Costco. What happened there? I don't remember, but I was there. There were lots of people around. They were hawking over food samples. I found it frustrating. I wanted to leave. I couldn't even come up with that. It, you know, the slate went blank. The screen in my mind went blank, but I did remember what it was, and I know some of you want to know, and if I don't tell you, I will never live it down. I was on my way home, and I realized I was talking about confusion, and we went by this stack. I even got a picture. There's a picture. I, if I would have been, and I, if I'd have had an IQ in double digits, I would show you that picture right now rather than single digits. 
But I was in Costco and looked at this stack of cans, and I read on the cans, and I took a picture of it, and some of you this means one thing too, but me, it meant something else. I saw that. I said, they're selling cans, cases of cans of evaporated milk. So you're selling empty cans. Yeah, I'm going to have a can of that. Well, go ahead and give me a cup of that evaporated milk. How do you drink that? Some of you know. I don't know, and I don't even want to know. But that was my Costco thought. Let's go back to the other. You can trust in God. He's not like evaporated milk. You can trust in God. You can. You have to eventually if you're going to follow him. But greater than that, you can trust in God. You can trust in God. And David is saying that. I can trust in God. And that is a great relief. Back to 146, and I'll hustle through the rest. Back to 146. With you, O Lord, the oppressed can... And these these are just great. And they're in the Bible. With you, O Lord... The oppressed can get, can get justice. The hungry can be satisfied. Those in bondage can be freed. Blind eyes can be opened. You watch over strangers and immigrants. You hold up and strengthen the fatherless and the widows. That is a God that I want to give people. You, O oh Lord, amaze me with your ongoing greatness. There's no end to it. There's no end to it. And it's a matter of praising God with our life. Committing, being purposeful, being intentional. You know, those of you who are in business or have been in business, especially management, there's, there's a, an intentionality that must be there for things to work properly. They don't just happen. You know, people are lucky when they work really hard, they end up being more lucky. They end up being more lucky, we say. No, they, they worked for that. They, they set that in order. They intentionally planned this out. We have to intentionally decide and purposefully decide that I'm going to give God the praise of my mouth, my mind, myself. I'm going to trust in Him. That's the foundation for the entirety of relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I'm purposing to follow. I'm purposing to allow myself to trust this person. You know, somebody I do trust, I will gladly give them the key to my house and say, yeah, drop that off, do this, fix that, do whatever you want. Gladly, gladly. I have people that I'll do that to. They have skills that I don't have. It's like, yeah, here's, you know, here's my key, here's my garage door opener, do whatever you need to do. Uh, I'll get it back from you whenever. Some of them, you can keep the key, I don't care. Because I trust you. Because I trust you. When we trust God, we're able to give Him things that we can't give otherwise. And the only way you're ever going to be able to give yourself your intentions fully to God is by trusting Him. But then so many people have disappointed you along the way. So many people have let you down. So many people have disappointed you. It's hard not to cast that on God. It's very difficult for us to say, okay, God, I fully trust you because it seems like every time we fully trust somebody, they burn us. They disappoint us. And so we say, you know, I I think I'll hold some back. We have to purposefully and intentionally decide I'm going to praise God with all of me. I'm going to let that filter be in place. So everything's going to go through that. And I'm going to allow God's goodness to consistently amaze me. And I'm going to allow myself to trust him because I can. I was going to go further, but I'm going to stop right there. So that statement... God is good. When I say that to you now, rhetorically, I say that to you because 
I know it, and I mean it. When I stand up in this pulpit, I'm not, I'm not filling a space by saying that. I'm saying it because I believe it, and I get it, and I, and I, and I want you to get that. That's really my goal. I want you to get that more than any one thing. I want you as, as people, as family, to understand God is good and he loves me and he will amaze me with his goodness if I allow him to. And I can trust him. I can trust him. And it's a journey. That's why it's, it's a journey. It's called a journey. It's a race. In the New Testament, it's called a race. It is because we don't get it all at once. It doesn't all happen at once. We get salvation. We get change of mind, heart, direction all at once. But we don't get full understanding all at once. It's a journey, and, and we struggle along the way. But we get to that point, and we say, I can trust God, I can trust God, and I purposely want to pursue Him. If you're with us today, you're in the audience, or you're watching online, you say, I'm there. I, I, get, I get what you're saying, and I need to make that decision today. I need to make that decision today. I'm going to purpose in my heart. I'm going to purpose in my heart to trust God and allow myself to have a relationship with Him. So I need to start, create, or recreate a relationship with God. I need to, to establish or reestablish a relationship in my life with God. And I know that today. I just want to pray with you. If that's you today, here or there, I want to pray with you. And if you're in the room, I'm going to ask you just to stand up. I'm not going to have you walk anywhere or do anything other than this. But I believe we need to have inner understanding and outward action. It makes a difference. And it's biblical. You say, I need, I need to establish a reestablished relationship with God in my life today. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to pray that with you. And I'm taking a stand for that now. I'm going to lead you in prayer and just pray this with me if you're in this situation today. And thank you for being willing to put yourself out there. Thank you for being willing to trust God enough to take a step. Pray this with me if you need to. Heavenly Father, I need you in my life. I choose today to establish or reestablish relationship with you. I commit myself with you. I choose to be a follower of Jesus Christ. I ask you to change my heart, my mind, my direction. Give me your strength and everything I need to move forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Stand with me if you would, everyone else. God bless you, those of you who stood. And I pray for you. It doesn't end here. I pray for you that God will continue to speak to you. That same sense of, yeah, I need to do this. This is me. Listen to that voice. Listen to that voice. The voice of the Spirit speaks to us. It does. We just He does. We just need to listen to that. And, and stay in church, especially if you're just... If you're just creating or reestablishing relationship with God, stay in church. I know online is great. I believe in that. I'm glad people join us there. You're welcome there. But there's something about being in the house. Get yourself connected. Get yourself connected to the, to the family of God, to the presence of God. Being here in present, in person, uh, makes a lot of difference when you need that. Some of you listening today, you need to get in the house. And I'm not, I'm not a guilt guy. I'm not one that says, hey, you got to be here every week and do this every week and do this and do this. I'm not that guy. But some of you listening need, need to sense what happens in the house. So just you know, stop making excuses and get here periodically, if nothing else. Walk out the doors. Represent Jesus Christ. Represent the things that, that I gave you out of Psalm 145. Um, know where you're going, know who's following you and who's coming behind you, and uh, be full of love and mercy and justice and favor and help and assistance, gratitude. God bless you. Have a great week. Thank you. Be blessed. Be safe.